The cost of producing cattle right now is the highest I've ever seen it, and it don't seem to be an end in sight. Pat Dean has been raising cattle his entire life. A third generation rancher, he's used to working seven days a week, 365 days a year. We try to get up and get started about seven o'clock and uh, we go just as long as we can to accomplish as much as we can and uh, hopefully if nothing out of the ordinary arises, we get to quit at a decent time. And sometimes we're out all night. Over the years, he's seen a lot of ups and downs but never a crisis quite like this. Low prices for our product and high prices for everything we need to produce this product. But it seems like in the last year or two years, uh, all our outgoing money or all our expenses, the things we have to buy have just skyrocketed. American farmers are feeling the pinch of inflation across entire production lines. The price of fertilizer, corn, fuel, and labor are up with no ceiling in sight. Well, we definitely think a lot more about purchasing anything. I mean, we try to get by with what we have the best we can and, and not buy any new equipment and try not to do a lot of unnecessary, unnecessary work. As people like Pat struggle, demand for beef is spiking. Prices were up more than 20% in November from a year earlier. Despite those markups, many ranchers say profits aren't being evenly distributed. There's no guarantee of anything. Prices could be uh, 10 cents lower, 10 cents higher. Just, we just, we're at the mercy of the buyers at the sale today. Where most people produce something, they kind of control the price. We don't, we just get what we get and hope it's enough to pay the bills. Federal data shows that for every dollar spent on food, the share that went to ranchers and farmers dropped from 35 cents in the 1970s to 14 cents recently. That could lead to some tough decisions. Um, I hope to be able to do this till I'm about 65 and, and then downsize to just a few at the house. Hopefully we've got enough money to live on time by that time, but if we don't, we can sell our property and, and downsize there too and, and retire on that. The White House is pointing the finger at meat packers. Since the 1980s, the industry has seen rapid consolidation with only four major companies dominating the space today. Part of that is a movement into bigger slaughterhouses and bigger meat processing facilities that create these economies of scale that reduce the price of meat, but obviously that creates a capacity constraint, and it's a big capital investment to create a new one. Mike Dorning is a Washington correspondent for Bloomberg News, overseeing coverage on agriculture. He says that there are a lot of factors at hand. Meat companies would tell you one of the problems they face is it's harder for them to get enough people to work and keep those factories going at the kind of pace they want and still pay the wages that they want. The Justice Department is investigating these companies to determine whether they are violating antitrust laws. The probe started in the last year of the Trump administration, and Biden's administration is pushing forward. Earlier this year, the government unveiled $1 billion in aid for smaller meat industry producers. So much of the food inflation has been meat inflation, be it beef, pork, chicken, and that's politically sensitive, not just on the rancher side, but on the consumer side and it especially hurts middle and low income people who use a bigger part of their budget for food. So the Biden administration has been like looking for ways to try to attack inflation. While they wait on assistance, farmers are looking for a future that keeps them on land and following their passion. I hope I'm always able to have a few just because we enjoy raising them and that's what we do. We just kind of take it one day at a time and Whatever comes along, we'll get through it one way or the other.